for more on the referendum, we bring in Christina Escobar. She's a Cuban journalist and political analyst. Thanks very much for your time there, Christina. Now, what is so significant about this family code, not just for LGBT uh, community members, but what about for Cuban families in general? Well, it, it, was, it is very common in Cuba, the fact that a lot of children are raised by stepmothers or fathers. And sometimes these people which raise these children since very early uh, have no rights over them. So now th there's no, the, the only biological, the, the only important link in a family, according to the current law, is the biological link. So now it, it, it the, at the same level, there is the law caring link that is created when you love someone, when you take care of for someone. That's why it's called the love of affection, so the code of, of affection and how important that is. And also, of course, the fact that older people are taken care of better and the fact that women are entitled of uh, equal treatment uh, versus men. So like in house, household chores, you're supposed to be, uh, to, to rate, to, to share the those with the other member of the couple. So definitely it is groundbreaking, it is revolutionary and controversial. And tell us a bit about the history of LGBT rights in Cuba and what this vote means for the community. Well, it, it's a, quite a tremendous achievement because for many years, LGBTIQ plus communities have been uh, struggling uh, in many ways, uh, asking for rights, marching on the streets, sometimes legally, sometimes illegally. They've been victim of violence, of discrimination. But in 2019, uh, um, constitutional reform made illegal to discriminate someone based on gender identity or sexual orientation. So this code of families was essential to actually make that constitution, this constitutional principle of not discriminating trans people, homosexuals, gay couples. Well, to make it a real thing, you needed this code of families. So it's tremendously important the fact that everyone has the right to form a family. This is tremendously progressive for this society in which still transphobia, homophobia, male chauvinism is a reality and present in a lot of families. So this is why it's so um, revolutionary for gay couples to be able now childbearing or assistive reproduction in, in the healthcare system. Uh, and this is, was also one of the reasons why the code was so controversial. Maria Le Castro, the daughter of former Cuban President Raul Castro, has openly advocated for improved rights for gays, lesbians and transgender people. But the push for greater equality has faced stiff opposition from both outside and within Cuba. Why so? Well, there's, I, I believe there's two reasons around the oppositions, and the, the, the people against the code. First, the timing. Uh, Cuba is under one of the most serious crises ever lived in this country uh, because of, 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 of the enforcement of sanctions since Trump's years and not changed a bit by Biden's administration, the COVID crisis, government management problems, all of these together, blackouts, the summer, COVID-related uh, crisis, all of this together has created a huge burden on Cubans. So in this moment, you can expect that there are people that are relating uh, that are linking the code with the government as the government has take for itself the campaign for the code. So a lot of people are, are giving a punishment uh, vote to the government and this might happen and it might be seen in the final numbers later today. Uh, but also evangelical groups, fundamentalist Christian groups are also pushing, have been pushing, knocking on doors, calling the people to vote no and also a lot of misinformation that might be related with these fundamentalist groups uh, that say no, uh, vote, vote no, based on, on, on misinformation, on fake news. But it's interesting to see that from the Cuban-American community, uh, you, you see a lot of activism around human rights in Cuba and how supposedly are violated in this country. However, now this code is pro-human rights. So a lot of people that didn't enjoy these rights will now have these human rights. However, they do call for the vote no. I'm talking about a huge community that has a lot of uh, audience and, and, and do have a lot of grip on social media and these people are calling to vote no just because the Cuban government is pushing for it. So these are the main sources of resistance this code might have and as a matter of fact I interviewed uh, a, a top um, politician this morning and he told me this will not be a unanimous vote which is actually kind of weird in this country and that's why it, make it makes it so interesting and I think it is an interesting exercise that will from which we can learn for the future. Absolutely. Christina, thank you so much for your time. Christina Escobar for us, Cuban journalist and political analyst.